Okay, let's um, let's pray and then uh, we'll get started. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for Father. We thank you for this uh, time in your presence. We thank you for uh, every new day that you bring our way, Lord. Thank you for packing it with uh, uh, with so much of potential, God. We thank you for packing each day with your benefits, as your word says, Lord, that you're the one who daily loads us with benefits, Lord. Uh, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to um, walk with you. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your voice. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you've given us, Lord, to uh, to hear and to and to diligently be doers of your work, Lord. Master, we we thank you that you never, uh, Lord, leave us, that you never forsake us, Lord, but you're always with us end of the ages, God. And what a joy it is to uh, journey together, Lord, with you. And Master, today's uh, sessions, we commit into your mighty hands. I pray that you'll continue to speak to us. I pray that there will be much edification, and I pray that there'll be much sharpening in the spirit, even as we, um, Lord, uh, learn to hear your voice, Father God. And um, I pray that there will be always be a rich deposit of your word in our hearts, Master. And right now, I just pray for a, for a freshness to come about us. I just pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, as we've been reading, as we've been studying, that um, you know there can be many infillings, right? So let's uh, why don't we just ask the Lord to fill us afresh this morning, right? Fill us afresh this morning, and all that the disciples did was just pray and ask, and the Holy Spirit filled them. So uh, even this morning, let's just ask, pray, ask, uh, expect, and have a hunger and uh, for the touch of God. And let him fill us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord. Fill us, Lord. And we just want to receive from you this morning. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that your thoughts, that your desires, that your will will um, take precedence over everything of the flesh, everything of the unrenewed mind. God, we pray that that your will and your ways, Lord, will be first and foremost in our lives, Lord. We thank you. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory at this time. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So, um, any uh, any further questions, Divya? You know, uh, we uh, Divya asked a question in the mentoring hour about uh, you know whether the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, whether uh, it is some or a, you know a few for a few people, or is it like one gift for someone? You know, so is, is there a a limit on numbers for uh, a, a person, you know, and then we're just trying to answer that. And um, so we were looking at one question. So we're going to look at that in detail, actually, about the gifts, how they operate, the foundation for the gifts, and so on. Um, so, uh, so we we saw that you know it, it, it is the same Holy Spirit, one Corinthians twelve and verse eleven, who works all these things and distributes to each one individually as he wills. So when we see that verse, it's like okay, um, you know, he gives. So as he chooses, he gives. So therefore, it could be one, or one here, one there, which is true in a collective. You know, when we gather together as a as a church, uh, but as we read through the rest of the passage, like twelve uh, rest of the passages, um, chapters following that, which talk about the same uh, topic. 12 and 13 and 14, we see many uh, instances where uh, at least a couple of them, where there are clear instructions there. Paul says, you know, we you desire the best gifts, like the, the gifts which, uh, 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 gifts being, meaning the manifestation of the Spirit, right? That the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, displaying His power in a tangible way. So you desire that, um, and then he gives the list, those nine are listed there. And so we are we are called to, uh, exalted, to desire the best gifts, you know, desire. Uh, what are the best gifts, the best suited for that particular occasion, that need, that challenge? Um, so we are to desire, and why should we desire? So that he might 
manifest himself in that way. So we looked at how the Holy Spirit, the gifts, you know, um, are part of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us. So therefore, you know, He can choose to uh, manifest or display uh, Himself in these ways through, uh, you know, or many ways through a believer at an instance, right? We also see in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1, Paul says, Percy love, desire, spiritual gifts, uh, again, plural, right? So um, so it's not restricted for, you know, uh, a certain gifts for certain believer, but all, right? As, uh, and we are called to desire the best gifts, right? Um, so any of, uh, you, you had a question, uh, Divya, um, follow up to that, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vesta. It was uh, pretty clear. Uh, my question is regarding, uh, like, so uh, a believer is uh, indwelt with the Holy Spirit when he puts his faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, so these gifts are expressed as a result of the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's one question. And the other is in 1 Corinthians 14.5, uh, Paul is saying that I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, uh, but I would rather have you prophesy. Uh, so I was just looking at the first part of the verse, like I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. Uh, so that implies that there were some people in the Corinthian church who were not. Uh, so I was a little, you know, uh, connecting between those two, I was thinking, oh, is it like some people had it and some people didn't have it? Yeah. 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 So so it's true. Yeah. So it's true that, um, you know, some, some people, uh, like, though every it, it's for every believer, this gift is for every believer, uh, not every believer, uh, you know, walks in it. That is for true. I mean, that is so true. And uh, and uh, like looking back personally, also, you you know that, you know, as a believer, uh, I didn't know about this. It could be many reasons, ignorance, maybe, or maybe we didn't just, you know, uh, pursue, uh, or maybe we thought that, uh, you know, it is only for some, so, you know, it's not for me. Um, so, um, yeah, so like you said, in the content church, you know, Paul's desire is that everybody uh, starts to, um, um, you know, manifest the gifts, and, and even more, uh, that they prophesied. And the reason he says that is, he's going to address a topic of, uh, uh, I mean, the issue of uh, a public, uh, publicly speaking in tongues or uh, delivering a you know message in tongues that is what he's going to be talking about in the you know following verses and then uh, so he goes on to say you know I would rather speak in the church in a gathering I would rather speak a few words which with understanding uh, which you can understand rather than uh, you know many words uh, in tongues so that you can receive edification because he makes that distinction between the gift of tongues and gift of prophecy uh, because gift of tongues yes i am personally edified but the hearer need not necessarily be edified unless there is interpretation of tongues whereas if it's a prophecy where it's an inspired word of god and god you know giving a message a now word to the church then the church is edified every believer who hears is edified because prophecy brings edification exhortation and um, the comfort which we see in verse 3 right so so that is why he says that you know um, that uh, uh, you know I wish you all spoke in tongues but then even more that you prophesied and he's, again he's talking about uh, you know gathering and the church gathers together when there is prophecy there is edification for the believer yeah Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Right. right. Okay. So uh, today, um, let's continue from where we um, where we stopped last uh, session, last class. We looked at uh, being led by the Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and if you're following in your notes, it's page 18 in your notes, uh, being led by the Spirit. So the, the, we we as believers have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. Okay, so not pushed, uh, not forced, not dragged, but led. Okay, so which means the word itself implies that uh, you know there is a following that happens. So he will lead, but there is a responsibility to follow the leading of the Spirit. Right, that's what it means. So uh, uh, you know a person can lead. 
but if I, it depends on the person who's following to follow the lead, leading of the a person who's leading in order to, you know, get into or walk into all that the person who's leading is showing or, you know, a taking, um, you know, so, so that's very, very, uh, very important. So the Holy Spirit leads us and we as believers, we have the privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit, right? led by God himself. Uh, well, is it uh, in what situations? In all situations, right? Uh, it uh, In all situations, maybe it could be something very trivial, uh, mundane, routine, uh, as everyday things, or it could be, uh, you know, some of those, um, uh, we're at the crossroads of making some very important decisions. Okay, where do I live? What do I do? What do I choose? Who, you know, uh, uh, you know, I can, who, who is my life partner? All those things, right? All those very um, like significant questions. Uh, the Holy Spirit leads. The Holy Spirit leads us, right? Um, so uh, let's look at uh, that verse which we saw again, uh, chapter eight and verse fourteen of Romans. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, uh, then heirs and so on. You know, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. So the Holy Spirit of God, first of all, he uh, leads us into our identity. Right? Leads us into our identity. What is that? You know, uh, identity that we are children of God, that we are sons and daughters of God, that we are co-heirs with Christ. So, um, so the Spirit by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You know, relationship. Uh, because of the Spirit of God, we are able to cry out to God and uh, and refer to Him as my Father. Right? Uh, refer to God as Father. So who inspires us to do that? Who leads us to do that? It is none other than the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, we might have, you know, uh, teaching and say, okay, this is how you refer to God and so on. But, but the fact is that the Spirit of God inspires us. The Spirit of God leads us and gives us a sense of knowing on the inside to reach out to God as Father. Right? So relationship and identity as you know, uh, sons and daughters of God. So he leads us into that. And of course, you know, he leads us in various ways, you know, like we were saying in ministry and in, uh, in, in worship and in prayer and sanctification, uh, in living a holy life and all that, right? He leads us, okay? Um, so uh, in the next chapter, uh, chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, Paul writes, I tell the truth, I'm not lying, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. So, uh, you know, our own conscience uh, bears witness with the Holy Spirit. When our mind is renewed, when, our, when the Word of God saturates our heart, or we have a deposit of God's Word in our hearts, you know, our conscience bears witness with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and uh, and he's saying, you know, there is. He goes on to say that I'm speaking the truth, and he goes on to say, talk about his experience. You know, I have great sorrow in my heart for my countrymen and all that. So he's saying, you know, my my mind, my conscience uh, bears witness with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it is an agreement with the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, uh, is testifying uh, along with the Holy Spirit. Now, when it comes to the leading of the Holy Spirit, of course, uh, you know, there is another uh, publication of uh, you know, God's receiving God's guidance. Okay, and uh, let me just put it here receiving God's guidance. Um, if you would have uh, read it, I just want to encourage you to um, you know, go to. Um, uh, you know, I'll use the website. It is, um, I think it's uh, slash books. Okay. So um, I think you, uh, is it really best if you can download the PDFs and keep it for your reference? And, um, and many of the things, right, uh, many of the questions that we might have, you know, are uh, answered 
in these uh, because each book is a is a is a is a study right it's a study there's a, there's nothing but scripture so it has the biblical um, the references the foundations and why um, you know these answers i mean why um, uh, it is so you know when something is stated it is all, always backed up with scripture so um, it it will be good if you can you know make it a point to study um, oh i see okay ministers foundations i see right so um, uh, so that is uh, you know so if if you when we study that we we get the details of how the holy spirit leads and and so on but the fact is that um, you know we are led uh, by the holy spirit okay and in uh, the holy spirit leading us he never contradicts with the word of god okay he never contradicts with the word of god 1 john 5 7 says that the spirit and the word agree okay? which means that uh, uh, you know um what is the word of God, it is but the desire, the will of God, right? These are the thoughts of God. Um, this is, uh, you know, what God, uh, uh, his likes, his dislikes, and so on. If, if you look at the word, you know, if you look at the Bible, so it, it describes him. It's uh, God speaking to us. It's God describing, introducing himself to us um, and gives a revelation of, you know, what he likes, what he does not like, and, and so on. So. Uh, who go, the character and the nature of God. So the leading of the Holy Spirit will never contradict, will never be opposite of the standards of the Word of God, the values of God, the ways of God, right? So uh, so we can be assured that, well, the Holy Spirit will not ask you to go and, you know, like rob someone uh, or, you know, injure someone or destroy somebody's life. You know, Holy Spirit will not lead you to do that. You know, right? um, you know uh, rob a bank or something and uh, and give that money to put the money in the offering no he will never leave you know he will never do that why because uh you know, psalm 23 very very clearly says that he leads us in paths of righteousness for his namesake okay so the path is a path of righteousness it's not a path of unrighteousness so when he leads us it's always in paths of righteousness which uh, which is in agreement with his nature, right? holiness uh, and righteousness, purity, uh, and so on. So, so that's one of the things, right? The spirit and the word agree. So that's one of the tests. Right? Does it agree with the word of God? You know, I'm, he's, I feel that he's leading me to do something, but it, does it agree with the word of God? Is the Lord Jesus glorified in this? Right? In the end, uh, through this uh, leading to this act, who gets the glory? Right. Is the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, you know, is it dishonored in any way? Then we can, you know, we can very clearly, confidently say that that's not the leading of the Spirit, right? So these are uh, a couple of things. Um, but you can uh, look at that publication, the book, uh, Receiving God's Guidance, for more details. Okay, um, I'm just going to skip page 19 for now and go to page um, uh, 20 and we're going to look at a few more ways by which the holy spirit leads us and how what he does in the life of a believer particularly in ministry okay so ministry is nothing but uh, service or to serve uh, who are you serving in ministry we are serving god we are serving god's people uh, uh, whom god is very you know specially refers to as his flock Right, God's people, God's building, God's field. So it's all God's you know, meaning. It's um, God's possession, right? So in ministry, we serve uh, people. We serve God's people, God's flock, right? As uh, maybe as shepherds, as ministers of God. Right. So in serving, um, in ministering to God and ministering to His people. Um, the Holy Spirit enables us. The Holy Spirit enables us in many ways. One of the ways is uh, by by His power and and through the gifts. And these gifts, uh, like we were looking at one Corinthians twelve, these gifts are for building up. These gifts are not to sh show that someone is special or someone has special abilities. Right? These gifts are to build up. Build up who? Build up the people of God, and build, which means 
building up the body, building up the ch uh, church. And uh, uh, it, 1 Corinthians 12 is um, is very clear. Um, yeah, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, right? But uh, let me just put the reference here. Um, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says um, that the, man, the manifestation of the Spirit, okay, referring to the gifts, manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay, so when, the, when you say manifestation, it means all the gifts, because that is what it's, it's going to talk about. There are different gifts, there are different uh, ministries, there are different activities, but it's the same Spirit, and the manifestation of the Spirit in these ways, different gifts, different activities, different ministries, is given to each one. The reason is for the profit or for the benefit of all. Okay, And the same Spirit is given so that the church can be uh, benefited, the body can be benefited, for the, it's for the profit of all. Okay, um, So that's uh, one of the things that we see. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, Verses one to eleven, and also uh, one Thessalonians chapter five. Okay, let's uh, one Thessalonians five, um, verse eighteen specifically talks about the gift of prophecy and uh, the exhortation not to quench the spirit, not to put water uh, and put out the fire. Right, so he says uh, five and verse. Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 to 20. Uh, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Okay, so um, it is the work of the spirit. Do not quench it. Do not despise prophecies, because um, you know prophecy is a manifestation of the spirit of God. So do not despise it. And if you look at uh, the next two verses, he says, "Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil." Okay, so the the gifts of the spirit are a display of of God. And it's displayed for the benefit of all, and it is, which which is, uh, um, sorry, that is one Thessalonians five, and um, verse eighteen to twenty, and we can take twenty one also. Okay, yeah, uh, it's there in the notes. So, uh, so we see the Holy Spirit, you know, um, being part and parcel of ministry. And of course, ministry, you know, if you look at it, is that we are being partners. We are coming into partnership with what God wants to do. Right? That's a very important. It's not that we do something for Him. It's 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 not that He has already taken the initiative. He's already doing something on the earth, and we are just partnering with Him. Right? We He gives us the opportunity uh, to partner with Him. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Then the we when we look at ministry, it's not just uh, you know because of special ability. Like I I remember when uh, you know I used to uh, listen to all these preachers and uh, and I was really taken up back uh, or taken up by the uh, the way they spoke and so on and very articulate etc so you know so the whole emphasis on you know uh, speaking ability right so i used to think wow this is great this is fantastic uh, but then you realize that uh, it's not just uh, the the natural talent of physical ability right it goes something deeper because uh, natural ability can, of course, you know, God will definitely use that. God anoints uh, our, you know, natural ability. Maybe we have a ability to sing, or, or you know, whatever our physical abilities are. Maybe we are creative, and you know, God will use that. But the thing is that the the it is it goes beyond that, right? Because it's it's something to do with uh, may our transformation is brought about by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And he wants us to 
be filled with that power, to be surrounded or uh, covered with that power, so that we can serve, so that we can truly witness um, you know, Christ wherever we are. Right? And um, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 very clearly you know the reason why the Lord Jesus wanted the disciples to wait is so that they can be filled with the Spirit, and so that they can be His witnesses. Yeah, I think in the notes there is a uh, there is a typo. Right, uh, the first point um, it says one eighteen. It's actually one eight. You can make that change. Okay. Uh, so Acts one verse eight: You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Okay. You shall receive power. So there are two you shalls. You shall receive power. You shall be witnesses. Okay, so the, the Spirit of God um, bringing about that possibility, that or that ability, that you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And that is what exactly happened in the lives of the disciples and in the contemporary church as well. Um, 1 Thessalonians 1. We were looking at 1 Thessalonians uh, 5. Let's just back, go back to 1 Thessalonians 1 and uh, verses 5 and 6. Um, so Paul, Paul says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only. Okay? So it is not just information or it is not just mere words that we brought. Okay? So this is saying it's, it did not come to you in word only. Okay? But also in power. So that word that was preached, that gospel, it came packed with power. These words contained power, transformative power. Right? And he says, and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, that having received the word in much of so much of uh, you know trouble and so much of uh, problems, but you received the word with joy of the Holy Spirit. So uh, Paul is saying, you know, when we shared, it, it did not. It was not just information. We did not bring just words, but it was with power. And what is that power? It is the power of the Holy Spirit. So he says, you know, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance and, uh, in, and with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, a very integral part of ministry of serving and so on. I'm sure, you know, you've heard of you know testimonies of people, of ministers of God and how their ministry changed. Right? Maybe they were ignorant of the working of the Holy Spirit and they reached a point in their serving, very sincere people, very dedicated, uh, but maybe they were ignorant, or maybe they had a you know a wrong understanding, whatever. But they came to a place where they were, you know, the eyes were opened to the truth of God's word, especially you know, Acts 1 8 or 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 5 and 6. And then they had this powerful encounter. They were filled you know, with the Holy Spirit. And the ministry changed, right? The, the, the way they served the people completely changed. It was with transformative power, right? Um, so, so we see that the power for the work of ministry comes from the Holy Spirit. Right, so all these abilities and everything just flows through us as human vessels. The river of God, like we see, you know, the river of God flowing uh, out and touching and bringing life and changing the very, you know, the very landscape, you know, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, the river of God ministering and bringing about freshness and changing um, the lives. Right, Hebrews two also talks about the same thing. That uh, that God is the one who uh, testifies or confirms the word uh, with signs, wonders, miracles, or bearing witness. Right? Uh, so Hebrews 2, uh, verses 3 and 4, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witness, how? Both with signs 
and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own signs, wonders, miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Um, what is he doing? He's bearing witness. Right? Bearing witness to what was spoken. Bearing witness to what was preached. So, um, so in our serving, in our ministering, we can expect that, desire that, and say, Lord, you bear witness now. now I've been sincere. I've been, you know, uh, I've done my best to uh, to bring the word, right? To serve the people with the word. But now, Lord, you know, you confirm it with your power with signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Spirit. You know, let it be released, let people experience, let people have an encounter. right? Um, because we don't want it to be just mere words, but with power. right? Okay, so gifts of the Spirit, powerful ministry, signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, Paul talks about that, Romans 15, and how um, maybe we look at that scripture um, that he has... He preached the word, and uh, it was with signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay, Romans fifteen and uh, verse nineteen. Yeah. Okay, so uh, verse eighteen. I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So he has preached the gospel and um, says uh, that uh, uh, it was with signs, wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. Okay, um, so we see this. Um, when it comes to uh, godly counsel when it comes to um, the words also to communicate the wisdom of God it is by the Holy Spirit okay and uh, we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and um, um, verse 40 he um, he actually in 1 Corinthians 7 the whole chapter he's talking about marriage he's talking about uh, you know single uh, uh, being celibate and all that and then he says you know uh, he, once he finishes that he says and I think I also have the spirit of God okay so he is giving uh, uh, he's sharing wisdom and experience and he also he also makes it clear you know certain things that he's sharing are not commands but from the the wisdom that God had given him um, and certain things he commands, saying this is from the Lord. Okay. But um, he gives counsel by the Spirit of God, and that's how the that chapter ends. You know, I think I also have the Spirit of God, meaning that whatever wisdom you shared here is by the Spirit of God. Like for example, um, verse forty it ends that way, and verse twenty-five, uh, he says, you know, I give judgment. Uh, you know, he says, I have no command. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandments from the Lord. Yet I give judgment as one whom the Lord in his mercy has made trustworthy. Okay. And so it's by the Spirit that he's giving this wisdom. It's by the Spirit that he's giving this judgment or uh, this counsel. Um, uh, where he's, you know, he's saying, oh, judgment is when you look at the pros and the cons. And he's saying, okay, this, this is the best path. Right? Or this is uh, this is the right thing to do. So he's giving the judgment, uh, the wisdom, based on the power of the or by the spirit of God. Okay, uh, because he tested it and says, I, "I think I have the spirit of God," and it's from that place that he's giving the wisdom. Okay, so um, as New, St New Testament ministers, we are called to a glorious ministry, nothing compared to the old covenant. Right? And we see this in several verses uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? So if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 3, uh, clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. So he's referring, Paul is referring to the Corinthian believers, and he's saying, you are an epistle, like you are a letter. Right? Um, written in our hearts, known and read by men. So you are an epistle of Christ, 
we were we were you know ministering to you and not with ink which is a natural substance but by the spirit of the living god a supernatural work of the living god so ministry and what is what is that supernatural work not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart so um, the holy spirit reaching to the heart of man and doing a work in the heart of man which means something which is very deep very convicting uh, very transformative uh, and it's by the by the spirit of god right reaching out and writing on a person's heart so um, he he makes us as ministers um, he's saying you know we uh, ministered by us but by the spirit of god right um and he also says in verse 5 uh, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything is being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god meaning it's you know we are totally dependent on god for this work that we are doing and it is he who ministers who who writes on the hearts of people okay so so we are very very you know we need to be dependent on the spirit of god you know certain things what happens is certain things we have area we are, we are strong you know like uh, let's say um, uh, you know we have a natural ability maybe you know you have a natural ability to to convey information to share thoughts right and uh, you can convey that um so what would happen is you know we need to ask that question am i dependent on the spirit of god or am i relying on my natural strength? no no natural strength nothing nothing to you know nothing negative about it after all god has given it to you right but am i dependent on the spirit of god in my ministry because sometimes we see oh, i can actually do it no problem right i can i don't need to prepare much i can do it and in in having that mindset we uh, we don't depend on the spirit whereas now that writing on people's heart is only by the spirit of god and that sufficiency that the ability to do that to be even as ministers it comes from god so paul with all his learning and everything he says uh, you know with all the experience with all the travel says uh, he had actually spent one and a half years you know planting this church and you know building the church to this level of um, you know in teaching and demonstration of this power of god and also he says our sufficiency is not in ourselves but our sufficiency is from god okay and uh, who has made us ministers sufficient as ministers of the covenant so um that is a lesson for us to uh, there's a takeaway Uh, that's something that we need to depend on okay um he's given us a more glorious ministry it's not the ministry of the letter um which which brings an awareness of sin and and so on um but is this the ministry of the spirit which goes beyond that right um and uh, which uh, which is more glorious it is the ministry of righteousness right and not just the ministry of condemnation not just saying that you are wrong you are in your sins uh because you know god is this uh god's law has covered and then because you look at the law you can say that yeah you are sinful but it goes beyond that it brings us to a place of righteousness through um the work of the cross and which for which we are ministers okay right so and all uh, verse 6 uh again saying that uh, it was sufficient as ministers of god um and verse 8 now will the men the spirit not be more glorious we are uh, ministers of the more glorious uh, ministry which is the ministry of the spirit okay and romans 8 11 talks about how he quickens our mortal body he gives life to our mortal body um yeah does the ministry of the spirit refer to the mosaic law yes is he's, uh, he's talking about uh, the, the mosaic law he's talking about uh, the old covenant and uh, he's saying he's you know uh, bringing a distinction i mean contrasting both and he's saying that you are actually ministers of the new covenant and this is something which is more glorious which is something which is uh, life giving more glorious and 
and then he says, you know, therefore we have so much hope, uh, we speak with so much boldness and so on. And if you read the rest of the chapter, he talks about how, um, you know, even he refers to uh, his time when, uh, in those days when the, when, the, the, when the law is read, there is a veil on the heart, in the sense it is, it is hidden. Right? But that veil is taken away when one turns to Christ. So yes, he's referring to the law and being a minister of the law and referring to the, the, the new covenant and being a minister of the new covenant. Right? Okay, so let's um, let's go to page uh, eight, page nineteen, uh, to hear from the Holy Spirit. Okay, hearing the voice of the Spirit. I think this was one of the questions you know somebody asked. Um, I, I forget who, but it was it was put there. You know, how can we hear the Spirit of God? I remember in one of the earlier classes, uh, somebody asked, you know, "How can we hear the Holy Spirit?" Right. So um, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. God speaks to us in different ways. Right? We know that He speaks to us through His primarily through His Word. Okay, so we should never forget that the Word of God is the foundation. He's, you know, this is His, um, you know, this is God speaking to us. Right. So, well, how does He do it? He He highlights. Right. He gives us a rhema. He quickens the Word to us, and He gives a revelation in our hearts and. Uh, we know that God has spoken. You know, nobody can, you know, uh, argue that out of us, because the Spirit of God in us testifies to our spirit, and He gives us that. You know, you might we might have read that portion several times, uh, but that day, you know, there is a special something. You know, there's an emphasis on a particular word or scripture, uh, and you know that God has spoken. So He speaks through His word. Well. God can also speak audibly, meaning like how he spoke to the prophet Samuel. He, was, you know, he heard the voice of God. And uh, maybe for some of us, you know, you've heard the audible voice of God, you know, maybe through your physical uh, senses or maybe in your spirit, you know, you heard the voice of God, you know, um, and people have testified saying, you know, God is uh, how they heard the voice of God. Um, Right, so God can speak through His uh, through the Spirit. It can, um, you know, in, in audible ways and through a prompting, right? Uh, uh, a prompting in our spirit. Okay, it's like a strong suggestion. I need to do this. Right, I I need to do this, and it's it's something righteous, you know, led in paths of righteousness. You know, I need to, you know, share the gospel with this person. I need to do it today. I need to do it now. Or I need to, you know, give this person this money. I don't know why, but I just feel a very strong um, prompting in the spirit. Okay, and and that is being led by the spirit. We are hearing from the spirit in our spirit. Right. So there's a prompting. There is a heaviness. There is an emphasis. Um, so uh, there could be dreams. Right. Uh, the, the God speaks to us in dreams, um, and um, uh, I think uh, let me take that reference as well. Um, so God speaks to us in dreams. God speaks to us in uh, you know in through visions. Um, so all these supernatural ways, uh, God speaks to us. Um, so we cannot, you know, we cannot uh, box God and say, okay, God does not speak. But all of us. Um, I just want to say that you know, all of us have the privilege of hearing God. Okay, all of us as believers, uh, but we need to grow in our relationship with Him, and we need to grow in our understanding of God, and and specifically we need to go, we need to sharpen our hearing, right? Um, and uh, for that, we need to understand that God, um, you know, speaks to us in all these ways. But we also need to understand that God speaks to us in our spirit. Right? God speaks to us in our spirit, man. Our spirit is capable of revelation, receiving that prompting, and in our spirit, man, right, we receive this. Now. For, I'm sure in your in Christ class, um, you would have learned how. Um, like 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23 talks about um, that we are spirit, soul, and body. 
right? We are spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit beings. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. Now we need to, you know, uh, we need to have a clear understanding of that, right? So when we are born again, our spirit is born again. Right? Our spirit now um, has the life and nature of God. Our spirit is one with Christ. Uh, one, one spirit. We are one spirit with Him. Um, so our spirit is born again. We are new creations in our spirit. Whereas we are not new creations in our body, right? We are our body is the same. Our body is if you know if we weighed seventy five kgs before accepting Christ, we will you know the very moment after accepting Christ, we will weigh, weigh seventy five kgs, right? There's no change in our body. Uh, in our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our imaginations, well, in that realm, there could be some changes. But uh, you know there are some more changes that we have to take responsibility for. Right? God has given that responsibility to us. Why? Because He has given us free will. In the realm of our will, mind, emotions, He's given us free will. He's given us the power of choice. So we choose to change our minds. Right? We choose to renew our thinking and bring it in line with the word of god that's renewing the mind okay so as believers we have the privilege of doing that and say okay god you know this is what you say i have been living my life this way you know whenever there's a trigger you know uh, whenever somebody uh, upsets me i i i i've always you know gone back and uh, upset them you know in return i've always retaliated in word i've always retaliated in uh, you know physically but now this is what your word says so i will align, you know, change my mind, uh, that every time that happens, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to verbally abuse them. Right? But I'm, I'm just going to bless them. So that change is called renewing the mind. Right? That ha happens in the, you know, you make that choice. And, uh, uh, but the thing is, our spirit is now born again. Our spirit has a little here see, feel, to some extent, you know, even taste and smell. Okay, so people have testified uh, about that also. So much like how we relate to the physical realm with our body, that's how we gather information, right? We, we drive or we go on the road, we're riding, we see the signal and we stop. Why did we stop? We saw the signal through our eyes. We saw the red light through our in, in, in our through our eyes, and then and then we process the information in our soul, our mind, will, emotions, and we made that decision. I need to stop. We made that choice, right? Because but we got the information through our physical senses. We saw, and then we stopped. Or somebody called out and said, "Hey, stop! There's a red light." And then we heard, we saw, and we stopped. We made the choice and we stopped. But similarly, in our spirit man, God speaks to us. Okay, God still speaks to us in our spirit man. There could be a sense of feeling, right? Physically, let's say, you know, you, you light the stove to heat some water, and then you accidentally put your hand near the near the flame, and you know, you feel you feel the you know the pain and you take your jerk your hand off right similarly there could be a sense of feeling but in our spirit man right a spirit man it could be something that a freshness or a, or a weight or it could be in our spirit man okay uh, so we'll take a break and then we'll come back um and then we'll continue with this right okay <laughs> 